Taxis can be an immense source of stress while on travel across the world. In this video, we're going to go over our top tips of how you can better negotiate with them and handle taxis with confidence. Let's talk about how to deal with taxi drivers while on travel. I'm Don. Welcome to my channel about adventure travel, our travel experiences across the world, and our tips for you to help travel better. If you like our video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Give us a comment below. Let us know what you would like another topic on. And if you'd like to check out our future travels, maybe join us for a trip or two. Check out our subreddit in the comment below. Now, on to dealing with taxis while on travel. Here's a list of important things to consider on how you should deal with taxis to make less stress on your travel. Research, negotiate, prepare inside the taxi, get out of the cab, make your payment, and at the very end, I'll go over alternative forms of transportation for you to consider. Now, on to research. Research begins by looking for information on the internet, the hotel guest concierge, or the airport guest information. Make sure you don't ask anyone for information uh, that has anything associated with taxis because they have incentive to not give you the correct information. You will find lots of people that give you incorrect information if you look for it in the wrong places, so be careful. Some information you'll want to ask is about the local taxis. Is there any local scams that the locals may know about or information on the internet that you can be aware of and avoid? Ask what the local taxis look like and how they can be identified. There are a number of unlicensed taxis that you can be in different areas that you might visit and you don't want to get into one of them. Ask how much you should be expected to pay from getting to point A to point B. What's a rough estimate? Usually locals have a good idea and this gives you a good baseline for negotiation. Also, be sure to ask what the tipping culture is. In some areas, you probably don't need to give a tip. It's not in their culture. Or in some areas, there's expected amount of tip being rounding up to the nearest dollar or by a certain percentage of the fee. Make sure you don't over tip or under tip. Next, let's talk about the negotiation phase. What's most important is if the taxi driver is seeming unreasonable or pushing back a lot of in the negotiation, it's okay to walk away and find another taxi. Don't feel pressured at any point. Always prefer a meter over the flat rate because usually if they try and do a flat rate, it's gonna be higher than what you'll pay for a meter. Another thing to consider, if you are paying a static fixed price and paying in cash, is consider using a credit card over cash itself. Not everywhere is going to have a credit card machine and some taxi drivers may push you to try and use cash, but a credit card gives you the benefit of being traceable. You, they have a receipt, they have a receipt, it makes it harder to scam you. So always prefer credit card over cash. At this point, if you've agreed to the price or are using the meter, it's safe to get in and start traveling to your destination. All right. Now let's talk about preparing to get to your destination and what you should do in that period of time. To kick things off, let's talk about what you should do with your luggage. Always prefer to bring your luggage into the cabin if possible. If you can't, it's fine to put it in the back, but what's important is in some areas, the taxi driver may try and use your luggage as hostage. Another tip would be jot down the name of the taxi driver and the license number of the taxi. In fact, you don't even really have to write it down. Just pretend to write it down. It's enough to let the taxi driver know, hey, I'm kind of looking and paying attention to things. It usually can dissuade someone from trying to scam you. Another thing to consider is preparing the payment, be it cash or credit card, before you get to where you're going. While in the car, it's a good time to just prepare, count, make sure you have the change, the exact money you need, and ready to go before you have to deal with the hassle of getting out, especially if there's traffic or arguments happening, you just wanna be ready to go. All right, let's talk about getting out of the taxi. Usually, it's pretty straightforward, but the most important thing is if you have luggage in the back, before you make the payment or agree to anything, go and request to get your luggage out first. In some cases, I told you, they hold the luggage hostage, so once you have it, secure it to the pavement. Keep an eye on it, because there could be other thieves around. Stand near your luggage, and then prepare to pay. 
now that you've readied your payment, you're all set to go, go ahead and make the payment. If it's card, it's pretty straightforward. If it's cash, just hand the cash to the taxi driver, but be prepared for renegotiation. Some unscrupulous taxi drivers may at this point say, oh, you owe them a little bit extra. There is traffic, you know, think of their kids, you know, uh, or they had to go through some extra toll. There's all sorts of reasons. At this point, refuse renegotiation. That should have been more transparent at the very beginning. You agreed on a price, give them the money, and be very straightforward. Don't allow any room for them to renegotiate. Now, in very rare cases, there can be some really terrible taxi drivers, and this has happened to me personally, where a taxi driver starts getting angry, starts shouting, and even could start threatening violence. In such cases, you want to look around your surroundings, look and see who's around you, make eye contact with someone nearby, and try to flag them over. In this case, you want to stand your ground and be prepared to leave. Hand the money that you owed them, give that to them, you prepared it, and try to get away. Don't turn your back to them, and if they continue to pursue, or they won't leave you alone, and or you don't see anyone else around, go ahead and get your phone out and prepare to call the police. Let them know you're calling the police, hold the phone up to your ear, and this is usually enough to dissuade them. They know they're trying to scam you. This is, it's all a ruse. They'll usually go at this point. But look, we talked about some of the worst of the taxi drivers out there. It's important to note, in most cases, you probably won't have this hard of time. And taxi driving is completely normal. Some taxi drivers will target you because they see you're a foreigner, and you might be targeted explicitly for that. But with that said, if you go prepared, you follow those steps, you make it a routine, it becomes easier. I've taken plenty of taxis, stress-free, and I want you to as well. Just follow these rules, these steps, protect yourself, and it should be stress-free. Also, for those good taxi drivers out there, let them know that you appreciate their service. Give them a good thank you. They're doing a great job, and if there's gratuity in that local area, make sure you tip them. All right. Lastly, let's talk about alternative transportation options that you can consider. Taxis may not be your thing. Let's look at ride shares, public transportation, and other options. You're probably familiar with Uber and Lyft from the US. Unfortunately, as you travel, you'll find that Uber and Lyft are not everywhere and may have very limited service. You might be waiting an hour and a half or two hours for an Uber to arrive in a very small area. It'll be a, what's up with that? But you'll find that if you do a little bit of research, you might see that there's local rideshare apps to that area. And if you download it before you go, it'll, it'll be fully automated and work just like Uber or Lyft. So do a little bit of preparation, a little bit of research, and you'll be set to go. The added benefit of rideshare apps is it's automated meaning you don't have to worry about negotiation. It's all straightforward and through the app, whether it's a good deal or bad deal, it's very straightforward and it's very transparent way of traveling around. What's important to know is rideshare isn't everywhere. In other places, especially metropolitan areas and big cities, you will have good public transportation and it's a great option. If you do a little bit of research on the timetables and make sure you're in certain locations and understand when the last ride is and when the first ride is, you'll usually find as pretty plentiful. And Google Maps works surprisingly very well in a lot of different places that we found. Lastly, another option that you can consider is hiring a private driver. This has worked out fairly well for us in the past, especially it's an alternative from renting your own car. and. For the most part, if, if the private driver can work very well as a tour guide as well, especially in an area where you really want to know the history and culture, it's great because you hire a tour guide and a driver all in one, and they can also recommend their different places and drive you around at the same time as their guide. And that's all for how to deal with taxis while on travel. If you have some tips that I missed and you'd like to share, leave a comment down below, or maybe some also, interesting experience of taxis, I love to hear them. And also, I'm happy to share more of my stories. It was a little light, this video is getting a little long, 
but uh, I have lots of access to this for sure. Take care until next time.